thank you for joining me here today at Why the Book Wins. My name is Laura, and today's video is a former Patreon exclusive video, which I am now releasing to the general public in an effort to try to get more patrons. <laughs> so if you like the following video, please consider signing up. You can become a member for as little as $3 a month, and I would greatly appreciate it. It helps keep this channel running. But yeah, even if you don't become a patron, thank you so much for watching. It means a lot to me. And let me know your thoughts on these Ripley, Tom Ripley movies down in the comments. And I hope you enjoy this video. Hello, and thank you for joining me for this month's Patreon video. Again, I just really appreciate you guys being Patreon members. It means so much to me, and I hope you're enjoying it and enjoying the bonus content I have been releasing. Earlier this month, I did a Talented Mr. Ripley book versus movie comparing the Patricia Highsmith book with the 1999 adaptation where Matt Damon plays Tom Ripley. But something I did not know until I was looking into the 99 movie is that there have been five Ripley adaptations. So there was one from 1960, an adaptation of Talented Mr. Ripley. It is a French movie called Purple Noon. And then in 1977, there was a German made movie called The American Friend with Dennis Hopper in the role of Tom Ripley. Then we have the 99 movie. And then there's one from the 2002 Ripley's Game with John Malkovich. And then in 2005, we have Ripley Underground with Barry Pepper. So this video, I will be talking about The American Friend, Ripley's Game, and Ripley Underground. I still have not watched Purple Noon. It has good reviews. And that, like I said, is an adaptation of The Talented Mr. Ripley, so it would be interesting to watch another adaptation of that book. Since I have read the book, it might be interesting. And I love the 99 movie, so I am curious to see what the French movie is like from 1960. So I'm feeling kind of Ripley'd out <laughs> right now, and that's why ultimately I just didn't watch it. But down the road, I do plan on watching it at some point. And so hi, so I am here recording later in the day. I recorded the majority of this video this morning, and since then I have watched Purple Noon, <laughs> so I didn't intend to, as you could hear in what I recorded earlier, but then I just decided I wanted to. So as I talk about Purple Noon, I will get into spoilers because I'm assuming you've already seen my video for The Talented Mr. Ripley. So as I talk about Purple Noon, I will be spoiling Purple Noon and then Talented Mr. Ripley book and 99 movie. And then after I talk about Purple Noon, we can resume with the rest of the video where I talk about the other movies. But this one, like I said, it's a French film and the guy who plays Tom Ripley is Alain Delon. And I guess he's a big deal in like French cinema, but as someone who doesn't watch many French movies, I had never heard of him, but I did think he was really good in the role. And this movie is interesting because unlike the book in 99 movie, it starts when he is already in Italy and he is already with Dickie. Although in this version, he's called Philippe, but I'm still gonna call him Dickie. So they're already together and they're already like, kind of friends. But in this, Dickie is like even meaner to Tom than he is in the 99 movie or the book where he just really mistreats him. And he admits to Marge that he just likes being mean to Tom and just seeing how much of it Tom will take, you know. And then in this version, Dickie is engaged to Marge as well. So in both movie versions, Dickie and Marge are engaged, whereas in the book they weren't, they were just friends. And also in this one, like the book, when he had planned to kill Dickie, whereas in the 99 movie, it's like a crime of passion. But in this one, and it's interesting because he and Dick, he and Dickie talk about his plans to kill him because Dickie finds some papers of his and he's like, hey, like, did you want to kill me? And then he starts asking him, like, you know, do you think you could get away with it? And they like start talking about the logistics of it. And Dickie just thinks they're just talking about it, of course. But then before long, Tom actually goes through with it. And then he does pretend to be Dickie briefly, but it was a pretty short amount of time. Whereas in the book and the 99 movie, he pretended to be Dickie for a longer chunk of time. And in the 99 movie, in that version, there was the Kate Blanchett character. I forget her name. And she was not in the book. And she's also not in this version as well. We also do not have Peter Smith Kingsley in Purple Noon either. But he does kill Freddy, of course, in all three versions. And with Marge in this version, uh, so in the book, Marge didn't like Tom. But then as time goes on, by the end of the book, she trusts him. Whereas in Talented Mr. Ripley 99 movie, she does like Tom. She kind of feels bad for him. But then by the end of the movie, she doesn't trust him and she knows he was up to something. Whereas in Purple Noon, she starts out liking Tom well enough and she just feels bad for him because like I said, Dickie is so mean to him in this version and he just bullies him. And we also have a scene where Tom is like reminiscing like, oh, remember your 15th birthday party when, you know, this and this happened. But then Dickie is talking to Marge and he's like, yeah, he made that up. That's not even true. I've never even met the guy before. So I'm trying to remember, I could have sworn in the book he and Dickie really had known each other just like briefly. But then in the 99 movie, they hadn't known each other at all. And so with this version, I don't know if Dickie was telling the truth when he said that to Marge. 
I guess he was. So I don't know. I'm kind of confused. And maybe you're supposed to be sort of confused on what the truth is anyway. But yeah, not quite sure if Dickie was telling the truth to Marge or if Tom really was lying. I'm not sure. But anyway, so in this, she feels bad for him. But then as things go on, it's kind of more like the book where she trusts Tom. And then by the end, like the two of them start to be in a relationship instead. And it seems like, and also in this version, an important thing is that in Dickie's fake will, he leaves it all to Marge instead. Whereas in the book, in the 99, movie, Dickie leaves, you know, quote unquote, Dickie does it when really it's Tom. He leaves all his money to Tom. So here Tom has Dickie leave all his money to Marge, but then he ends up like, you know, making moves on Marge and the two of them end up being a couple by the end of the movie. However, they are selling Dickie's yacht. And at the very end of the movie, they are bringing the yacht up to like check the hole or like the H-U-L-L hole. And he had tossed Dickie's body overboard and had been attached to a rope, but then he lets the rope go. But then as they're lifting it up, they see the rope had gotten tangled like in some part underneath the boat. And so Dickie's body ends up coming to shore because it had been attached to the boat all along. And so at the very end of the movie, we see that Tom is going to be arrested and he was caught for the crime, which I read that Patricia Highsmith, overall, she loved this movie, except the ending. <laughs> she did not like that Tom gets caught in the end, which there was like the Hayes Code in the early days of Hollywood. This was 1960 and it also wasn't Hollywood because it was a French film. So I don't know if they like had to have Tom get caught because of a code in place or if they decided to do that. But in old Hollywood, they had a rule where if someone does something bad, like murder, they had to be caught in the end and they could not get away with it. So I don't think, like I said, this was a French film. So I don't think they had to uh, abide by those standards. But even though Tom gets caught in the end, I did kind of like the ending too. Like I didn't dislike that he gets caught and it was unexpected because I thought he was going to get away with it. And yeah, it's like the very last minute when the body is found. So, so yeah, I thought this was an interesting adaptation and they made some interesting changes and it seems like they did over Overall, just kind of condense things even more. It's two hours, but even so, it seems like they didn't include quite as much as the 99 movie did. And we also don't see Mr. Greenleaf, the father. He was around more in the book and the 99 movie because he shows up when Dickie goes missing, whereas this, he doesn't show up until the very end. So this one definitely, you know, makes some changes from the book. Uh, but yeah, I really like this one. <laughs> so I would definitely recommend it if you've seen the 99 movie, if you've read the book, or it's also just an entertaining movie and it's a great thrill and we get great performances. And the guy who plays Dickie kind of reminded me of Jude Law too. So I thought that was interesting that both of the Dickie characters looked pretty similar. So uh, yeah, that is my review for Purple Noon. And now we will move on with the rest of the video, which I already recorded. And so I'm actually going to begin talking about the 2005 adaptation, and that is Ripley Underground, which stars Barry Pepper as Tom Ripley. And this one was actually filmed in like 2002, but then for some reason it was just shelved for like three years before it finally got like a European release. And when I was looking to watch it, I couldn't even find it initially until I saw that someone uploaded it onto YouTube, thankfully. So I was able to watch it there. And this one doesn't have great reviews, even though it does have a good cast. And we have Barry Pepper, we have Willem Dafoe, we have Tom Wilkinson, we have Alan Cumming, we have Claire Fon... Fon for Lana, who I like. And so it's a good cast, but it just, I think one issue people have with it is the thing that other people like about it. And that is that it has more of a comedic take. Like none of the other Ripley movies are humorous, but this one definitely is a bit of a dark comedy. And I actually love that about it. And Patricia Highsmith had said that in, pa in the past, adaptations kind of missed the comedy in her books because there is like a subtle dark humor there. And so she said a lot of movies just didn't seem to catch that or they didn't apply it to the movies. And so this movie was like, okay, we're going to lean into that dark comedy. And yeah, there are some uh, like pretty ridiculous scenes, but Overall, yeah, I had such a good time watching this movie and I would actually highly recommend it, to be honest. And this one is an adaptation of the book Ripley Underground. And this one I did start reading, but then I decided I just... Patricia Highsmith, I like her, but I don't like her as much as I wish I did. And so I decided I didn't want to finish this one. But in this story, Tom Ripley is friends with some artists and there's this up and coming artist, Der Der Derwatt, and he ends up dying, but he has a show that is coming up. And if people know he's dead, no one will care about buying his paintings. And so Tom and his friends are like, okay, well, what if we don't tell anybody he has died yet? Cause he dies accidentally. And so they put on the art show, art exhibit, acting like he is still alive. He just couldn't be there. And then another one of the friends who was also an artist, he's great at mimicking Derwitt's drawings, his painting style. And so they're like, okay, so not 
not only can we make money off of the paintings he already did, we can just hold off on telling people he's dead. We can have this guy keep painting, you know, these fake Watts, and then we can just keep making money off of it. <laughs> and so that is their plan. But of course, you know, things go wrong and more people die in the process. And then in the book, so t Ripley was already married at the start of Ripley Underground in the book, but in the movie adaptation, he meets this woman who he falls in love with. So he has this rom romance going on with this French woman while also dealing with this painting forgery thing they got going on. So yeah, uh, as far as Ripley Underground goes, I really enjoyed it and I would definitely recommend it, especially if you like dark humor and just, you know, not to take it too seriously, I think too. Like, obviously that's pretty clear with <laughs> this one. Um, and yeah, and I really like the ending too, so. Yeah, I would highly recommend this one. And then up next, we have The American Friend, which I'm talking about first because The American Friend and Ripley's Game are both adaptations of the same book. And the book is called Ripley's Game. But in this one, it's like, I think this might be either the last Ripley book or it's like one of the last Ripley books. So Tom is older at this point and he is living in Europe. Like after the stuff with Dickie Greenleaf, he just becomes an expat living in Europe. So this guy who frames paintings, he insults Tom. And then Tom is approached by this other guy being like, hey, we need someone to do an assassination and we want someone totally unconnected to us, someone no one would suspect. And because that guy snubbed him, he's like, use this framer, like no one would suspect him. And the framer is also dying of this illness. And, and so he doesn't, have much longer to live uh, but it's because he insults Tom Ripley that Tom <laughs> gives the guy his name and they go to this framer to get him to commit this assassination and then yeah obviously different things happen there but and so that is the premise of both the American Friend and Ripley's Game and Ripley's Game again we have John Malkovich in the role and I think he was good like I feel like John Malkovich was the most Ripley-esque you know going along with Matt Damon's uh, Ripley as well as the Ripley I read and talented Mr. Ripley you know but he here in Ripley's game, he is also married and he buys his wife this like beautiful old harpsichord. And so he does seem to actually care about her, which by the way, in the book and Talented Mr. Ripley, the book and the 99 movie, Tom Ripley is clearly homosexual or bisexual or something. Whereas all the other adaptations make no allusion to that whatsoever. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but, but yeah, so he is married in this movie and overall, like this one was probably my least favorite of all of the Ripley movies because it was good, but I just didn't find it as engaging as I would have liked. And it wasn't boring. I wouldn't say that, but I just wasn't as gripped by the storyline as it goes along. And we do have a young Lena Headley. Uh, I think that's what her name is. I'm trying to look for it right now. Anyway, I can't see what her name is, but I'll put a picture of her. Anyway, so she's kind of a famous actress at this point. So it was interesting seeing her in a younger role. And then also the, the director of this movie, Lillian, Liliana Cavini, she had to leave early on because she had scheduling conflicts. And so John Malkovich like finished up the directing for this movie. So I thought that was interesting. So this one is good. I didn't dislike it, but it was my least favorite of all the Ripley movies. So if you're going to skip out on any of these, honestly, this is the one I would say you don't have to watch. Having said that, <laughs> it was better than I expected. This was the first, after the 99 movie, this was the first one I watched and I went into it with low expectations, but I will say I liked it better than I thought I would. But even so, it was my least favorite of the bunch. And then we have The American Friend. And so this was a German made film, but it has, a, like I said, Dennis Hopper in the role of Tom. And this version of Tom Ripley is like the most unripley ish of all of them. I mean, Barry Pepper, I feel like he wasn't uh, quite the way I imagined Tom to be either, but Dennis Hopper definitely was like the most different. And he just had like this like chaotic, weird vibe to him. Maybe not chaotic, but just kind of like, I don't even know how to describe it. He didn't come across as like a sociopath or a psychopath or anything like that, which is how he's written in the book and how he is in the 99 movie, you know? And even Ripley's game, you, we kind of get that side of him. Whereas, yeah, here he just is, he just seems more odd. I guess is the best way I can put it. And I've seen Dennis Hopper in a few other movies and he always just kind of seems to be sort of weird. So maybe Dennis Hopper just, you know, added his own flair to this character, the same flair he adds to a lot of characters maybe. But anyway, so it's the same premise as Ripley's Game, as I said, but this one also includes the stuff with Derwatt where he is forging Derwatt's paintings and we have the painter who is making these forgeries. And then in Ripley Underground, there's a thing where this guy notices, he's like, hey, 
I think this is a forgery because Derwatt stopped using cobalt blue and now he's using it again. And that's very weird. An artist never returns to a color they've gotten rid of. So I think this is a fake. And in the American Friend, the framer, Jonathan Zimmerman is his name. And he notices it because he frames Derwatt's paintings. And so at an auction, he points it out, you know, talking to someone else being like, yeah, like, I don't know if that's real because there's a color blue in there that it shouldn't be in there. So I thought that was interesting that they intermixed the forgeries into American Friend. But yeah, I loved American Friend. I just loved the vibe of it. And it does have like that 70s vibe. It also kind of has that foreign film vibe too. And so I was just loving it. I love the direction, the cinematography. I thought the acting was amazing. The guy who plays Jonathan was wonderful. I absolutely loved his portrayal of this character. And also like, I'm gonna keep this part spoiler free, but in Ripley's game, American Friend, Ripley becomes close to another character in the movie. And I just loved seeing that bond between Ripley and this other person. And it also shows like a softer side to Ripley, you know, in both the John Malkovich one and in the Dennis Hopper version. But to get into spoilers, cause I wanna talk about the differences between Ripley's game and the American Friend because their endings are very different. So, so the person Ripley becomes close to is Jonathan Zimmerman. So initially he, you know, is annoyed at Jonathan for snubbing him. So then he tells his, you know, shady friend like, hey, get Jonathan to do your killings for you. And so he does one, but then the guy wants Jonathan to do another one. And Tom is like, wait, what? Like, you didn't tell me there were gonna be multiple. I thought it was just the one. And so he doesn't want Jonathan to go through with it. And so he ends up showing up to help Jonathan out. And long story short, they find out that Jonathan and Ripley were involved in the killings. And so they are after them. So the two of them kind of team up to fight these people off at the end of the movie, at the end of both movies. And Ripley also, you know, opens up and is honest with him about the fact that, you know, like I'm the one who set you up and I was spreading the lies about you. And it's because you snubbed me and I was upset about it. <laughs> but in the end of Ripley's game, so it's going well for the most part, but then Jonathan's wife shows up because she knows something fishy is happening. And then some bad guys show up as well. And they're like trying to shoot Ripley, but then Jonathan steps in front and he takes the bullet for Ripley. And then, you know, Ripley is able to kill the other guy. Aside from Jonathan, you know, Ripley is able to leave unscathed as is Jonathan's wife. But yeah, so Jonathan dies to save Ripley. Whereas in the end of the American Friend, so basically they take two cars, they're driving out into the middle of nowhere so they can burn one of the cars. And Ripley was in the car they burned. So he gets out, burns the car, and he's gonna hop in the other car, which has Jonathan and his wife. But then Jonathan gets in the driver's seat and he drives away, leaving Ripley behind. But then as he's driving, like he starts, you know, it starts to go dark and he ends up dying from this disease he has. It finally ends up killing him in that moment. And he's able to stop the car so the wife is okay. But I was confused why he suddenly starts to drive away and leave Ripley behind. Like I, I was just confused by that. I don't know if it's because even though he he has a respect for Ripley if he doesn't want, if he knew he was about to die because he could feel it. And so he doesn't want his wife to be involved with Ripley at all because he's shady at the end of the day. And so was he driving away to get her away from Ripley so that she could separate herself from all that shadiness? I don't know. <laughs> So yeah, the ending, um, I was kind of uh, confused why Jonathan abandons Ripley like that, but Ripley seems kind of fine with it. He's just like hanging out. I think he's singing or something in the end, which I said, like I said, he's kind of a funky character in this version, but anyway. So yeah, very different endings. It did make me curious on how the book ends, <laughs> like which movie is true to what happens in the book. So if anyone has read Ripley's Game, I'd love to know what happens in that one. So maybe at some point I'll end up reading it myself just because I'm I'm curious, but as of right now, I don't plan to, but we'll see. So yeah, anyway, I guess that wraps it up on my thoughts on these other three Ripley movies. Let me know if you have seen any of these. Let me know what you think of Tom Ripley as a character. Let me know what books you have read that have him. She has like five Ripley books. So, so yeah, he's definitely someone she returned to often. And yeah, I was surprised when I realized how many Ripley adaptations we have. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for being members. It means so much to me. And yeah, I will see you next month for next month's monthly video. Bye.